lifting up Jesus and opening his word from Australia, Denmark, Israel, Japan, New Zealand, Northern Ireland, Republic of Ireland, Singapore, South Africa, United Kingdom, Thailand, the Philippines, the United States, and throughout the world. You're watching Morial TV. Technically, there are those linguists who would say it is not just Paleo Hebrew and the Hebrew script as it now exists that you see in the Masoretic texts, for instance. They would point out that there's a Middle Ages Hebrew, although the letters are the same, something happened in the Middle Ages. Nikudot, points, vowels were added to assist the reading. You have no vowels in either Paleo Hebrew or Masoretic Hebrew. The vowels were, in the original Hebrew used in the Masoretic, the vowels were added in the Middle Ages. So there are those who would say this is a third variation. There are also those who would say that there are two, at least two strains of script within Paleo Hebrew, um, one more resembling cuneiform. But these are very technical areas where the experts themselves are somewhat divided. Let's answer the basic question. Essentially, it was this. If you were to go to the Dome of the Book at the Israel Museum in, in Jerusalem, you would see the Isaiah scroll or a facsimile of it. And you look at these other scrolls, and it is not the Hebrew text we see today. It will be difficult to recognize some of the letters, and even very difficult to read, even if you can read the Masoretic text or read modern Hebrew. What caused this shift between what you see in the Dead Sea Scrolls and what you would later see? Essentially, the Babylonian captivity. Influences of Chaldee came into Hebrew. There was a Hebrew dialect of Chaldee, commonly referred to as Aramaic. Okay. The figures, the letters, the characters in Hebrew became more akin to two things. One was the ever more prolific Greek alphabet. In Greek, alpha, beta, okay, gamma. In Hebrew, uh, aleph, bet, gimel. Hebrew began to take on the character of the lingua franca, which at that point had begun to become Greek. This became really important in the Septuagint when the Hebrew scriptures were put into Greek. The other influence is the Syriac text, which is the basic alphabet of Aramaic. So the influences of Aramaic, Kum Chaldi, and the influences of Greek, influenced the modification of the Hebrew alphabet. That was further modified for the sake of diasporic Jews who could not pronounce the vowels without the nekudot, without the points. There, for instance, was Talmudic references that Jews from Galilee, where Jesus was from, could not often be allowed to read the Torah In the synagogues because they could not properly pronounce the differences between the Hebrew letters Ayin and Aleph. <laughs> There's two A's in Hebrew, Ayin and Aleph, but which letter you use can change the meaning of a word. It can make it two different words. Uh, it became a problem, and that problem expanded into the Jewish diaspora, particularly after Bar Kokhba's rebellion. So it became an issue. 
in time, these nekudot were added, these vowel points. Uh, Israelis today have vowel points to teach little kids to read and in newspapers for olim, for new immigrants. But Israelis don't use these points that you would see in most Hebrew texts. Well, that's how it happened. It was because of the demographic and cultural and linguistic, I'm sorry, the demographic and cultural changes on the Jewish nation and the uh, cultural consequences of that demography and of that history and how it affected language. That is how the transition took place. The key, the central key point being the ramifications of the Babylonian captivity and the Hellenization of the Levant, of the Eastern Mediterranean, where other languages had to bring themselves in line with Greek, much the same as other languages have to bring themselves in line with English today. We don't think of it as English speakers, perhaps, but countries like China and Japan have had tremendous issues with technical terms because the technical terms are mainly English in, in, in high-tech industries and engineering. Uh, how do you say it in Chinese? Well, um, it was the same kind of problem. Only then it was not just how you say it, but how you write it. So the characters came to keep the basic design, as it were, of the original ones, but also were modified in the way they were written to make it more readable to Greek-speaking and Greek-reading Jews and Aramaic-speaking Jews whose alphabet was Syriac. That's the explanation. Uh, my wife could do a much better job than this than me, although my wife is a mathematician. She does have a degree in biblical Hebrew and Jewish history, and she's more apt at explaining it than, than I am. If she was available, I'd address the question to her. Uh, anyway, thank you for the question. I hope my answer is at least comprehensible. God bless.